Sister Margarita Marshall's ability to appeal to both young and old is something that many artists aspire to, but only few achieve. Part of her appeal is her unyielding faith in God. I met Margarita Marshall in 1983. Came there to the church. She was at another church though, but she came there. And you know how church always do. Move from one place and go to the next, you know. But then after she heard that maybe a beautiful young lady come to the church, she returned and come back there. And from then, she's dedicated, she's faithful, she is loyal. And let me tell you, she work in all areas in the church. When times got tough, Sister Marshall turned to selling snow cones to make ends meet. It has been her main source of income for almost 40 years. And she's known for having some of the best snow cones in the business. Every Friday I must get a snow cone before I leave. Um, the snow cones are wonderful, they're sweet, they're clean. Um, I was even mentioning to my mother that her snow cones have a wonderful clean taste. Wherever I go, I know that I can come here and I know that this is one of the best snow cones in the island. She's a legend, she's a very nice lady, she's always friendly, always takes the time out to find out how you are doing. And I think she's a very special person here to me and to most Barbadians. Almost everybody knows Sister Marshall. I mean, of course, our snow cones are the best. As a child, my mother would insist that we'd have to walk from one end of Bridgetown to the other because she was not buying anybody else's snow cones but Sister Marshall's. And my mother, to this day, will do that. And so um, it's been, you know, wonderful having her on my journey as a minister. And I look forward to sharing many more great days with my sis. I was ever a person that would get up and do. I don't care what it is. If I got to read out there, I will go there and, 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 and read. Singing upon te te television, people telling me, well, well, you, I see you sing, singing upon television and you doing this, uh, you get paid. <laughs> you suffer down you know? <laughs> So uh, I am very bold. I am very bold. I am a bold per per person. So that is where you see that I fit in between the men. I remember a time that the children had, all my children were small. The children had to go back into school. I had no money to buy clothes for them, to, you know, to ready go, go for, for them to go, go, go back. And I approached God. Now I hear no, I never work a Sunday. I never work a, a Sunday. I hear the Holy Spirit then work Sunday. What? That's my church day. Hey, that was the last of the car parade up in the square. They never had another another one. So be, being, having the children, and they were going back into school from the long vacation, I didn't want to get them the same clothes that they had. And um, I decided I can work. But I felt a, a bit shame, right? I decided now I can buy my surf and I, I gone. Up. That was a day I would never forget. I gone down. Hey, man, we well, thought you was in church. And I just, not a word. Not a word. I ain't interested in any talk. I ain't interested in getting any money the boy clothes so much during all that. So I said no, no, nothing. Ma, well, you should be in church. You, you, you only come down here. Peace, perfect peace in this dark world of sin. So <laughs> I gonna fill up my car. I fill up my car. I gone up, up in any square. And all of them, they surround me, trying to block me. My game move. But I know, I see the people walking through here, walking through there, and coming to me. I sell out and I left them. I went and find them and I sell out and I left, left, left them. I was able to, the Monday morning, put the amount of money that would buy clothes for them. And my daughter went and shopped for, for my children. I will never for, forget that. After selling snow cones in the Lower Green Van Stand for many years, she parked her cart after a health scare a few years ago. She developed an almost deadly case of bronchitis. I spent 35 years up to the time that I took sick. It was 35 years that I was selling 
any snorkel and business. And um, inhaling all of that suck from the buses, the doctor saw my lungs as a smoker's lungs. <laughs> I said, but I don't smoke, Wayne. He said, but you, you don't smoke. I said, no, I don't smoke. No, why be doing smokes? <laughs> but anyway, I forgot that I was working behind the buses. And the, those men used to got the, the um, got the engine on day in, day out, and you know, and I was behind the buses taking in all of that stuff. It's a wonderful thing. I would say a wonderful. It's a blessed thing that I am dead. I, I been the doctor, and the, the doctor, what did he, he say? He, like, he didn't know what really, really happened to me. But the point is about it, he gave me cough, cough sir. So I was coughing, 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 coughing. Me and my daughter, cash bus I went down, spikes, spikes down. I coughing, coughing, I went and get something to eat, coughing, the coughing get worse. So when he came back here then, that was um, um, the Monday evening I came back here and I get worse. But then in the night, I began to get the shots of breath. I was breathing from down here. And oh my God, but I was dying. I was dying slowly but surely. Her daughter had to rush her to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital where doctors worked hard to save her. It never lies me about 15 times that I'm in, in, the, in the place. And then the last time then the doctor came, the doctor said, Sis, we have to get your oxygen up. It is very low. <laughs> you, you, you know where, where, where I, I was heading? Down there. And let me tell you, God performed a miracle for, for me. The, They've had me all thing up with this and that, the test of my heart and whatnot. They said they have bron bad bronchitis. But God performed a miracle. They sent me up, up in the ward just for a day. And when I, I, went, I went, went to, then I start feeling good, you know. I start feeling real good. Three doctors came, came up. They came straight there for, uh, for, for, for me. And when they came, I was lifting the grip from off the bed. One doctor said, wait, wait, wait a minute. You just came from downstairs. And you lifting the grip from off the bed? Because they expect me now laying down, not knowing that God had performed a miracle. Um, then after that, one of the girls that tend to me asked her, um, you know this lady? Um, she said, no. She said, you say, you know, you, she's one of our best singers. Um, she said, she asked her if she ever hear me sing. She said, no. So um, she told me, sing a song for, for me. <laughs> and I started singing, it's Christmas time. It was around the Christmas time. It's Christmas time again. Oh, what a happy day. It brings us joy and cheer throughout the coming year. I was sick singing that. She said, wait a minute. This voice coming out of you, you're going home today. I was so happy. I didn't want to spend um, Christmas in there. I was so happy. These days, she's back to selling snow cones but from a very different setup in the parking lot of Massey Supermarket in Warren, St. Michael. As we found out, Sister Marshall's early life was not an easy one. I am not ashamed of it. My father took me away from school when I was around 11 years old. Take me at my aunt through a stepmother. That is why after I began to get children, I said, God, allow me to live to see my children come to maturity because of what I've been through with a stepmother. She had none, so she would not have known how to care ch um, ch ch children. So my father took me away from, um, from home through her and take me at my aunt and never look back.
My father never looked back. And my, mom, my, my aunt sent me out to work. After discovering that she was pregnant, her aunt wanted nothing more to do with her. Life got so rough for the young Margarita that at one point, she even contemplated committing suicide. This lady, Dor Doris Phillips, she took me in. And um, I, I used to work with, with her. I tell you what, she take me in, she cursed me, because she used to drink a lot of rum. But I used to save her money. Got her. She, she, she had a, a fella that used to steal her money when she get drunk. So as I see her start drinking, I would take up the money, I would hide it. So he had wanted her to get rid of me. So she said no, and she wouldn't. But she cared for, for, for me during the, those years that I was pre pregnant. She cared for me. I wanted to kill myself. The devil t tell me, not kill yourself. And, uh, but no, but God would not let it be so because I, that was in my um, teenage ye ye years. And um, Miss Philip, she, she took care of me. The gospel singer uses her job as a platform to minister to others. I, re I remember ma many times, many times people stopped me and asked me to pray for, for them. No, I'm glad that you asked that because um, that is something that used to happen regular. The last one that I can remember is a fella had um, his, his hand, I don't know if he had fallen, but his hand was in, um, in a sling, and uh, he tell me how that, it, that his hand was broken or fractured or something. So, but he says, sis, I want you to pray for me. I was walking, coming down um, through, the, through the street, selling. So I asked him, um, you, 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 if you're going to pray for you now? He said, yes. So as I finished sell, I, I tell him, come, and I pray with him there. There are people that came and asked me to pray for them. Even, even now, it, it has happened. Um, so my, 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 my work was not only for selling snow cone so as to make money. My, my work also was to witness. To date, Sister Marshall has recorded two albums through QSI Productions, Walk Holy and Higher Ground. She's also the recipient of many awards and honors for her contribution to local gospel music. It seems that this Barbadian icon has experienced it all the valleys and the mountains, but it has left her with an awesome testimony. I have trust in God with those six small children I had to work for, and I worked for them faithfully. I refused to involve myself. I involved myself with Jesus. I refused to involve my, myself with man or men. I took Jesus, and I'm proud of him. I'm standing before you tonight. I tell you, Satan, one time he spoke to me and he said, Will your husband go along? And, and he got women. We don't go along. I got men, men too. And I said, Say in the name of Jesus, come from a man. Not as long as God lived. And let me tell you, I've trusted God down through those years. And I'm standing on the promises that never